If you're a fan of dark places or eerie stories and weird findings in caves, you clicked on the right video today. It was described as like an M-shaped cave, but let me show you how, why. Sorry, this literally flies everywhere. From the gold-filled mountain where locals struggle to extract gold with their bare hands, to the cave filled with bright, shiny, glowing worms, here are the 20 mysterious things people found in the mountains. The Kaplakea Rock Tomb Kaplakea is an ancient tomb located deep in the mountains about 27 kilometers north of Turkey's Koram province, where it fades into obscurity day by day. For thousands of years, the Kaplakea Rock Tomb has been two things, a hidden architectural wonder and a great puzzle. It makes sense that the word Kaplakea means rock with a door, because details of what or who's inside are unknown. There's a platform with stairs leading to the tomb directly in front of it. However, it's surrounded by cliffs, so accessing the platform isn't an easy feat. From the outside, the tomb's entrance looks like a massive doorway. But the thing is, the door never opens. It never has and probably never will. The grand size of the door suggests that there's a giant cave behind it, but what's behind it is simply a tiny crypt with a body and nothing else. Now, the tube is not all about the door-shaped facade, it's a cube-shaped structure cut out of the mountain, with just a few points left where the tomb is still attached to the natural rock around it. This is most likely to keep the ceiling from collapsing. There's an inscription above the entrance of the actual grave part of the tomb that reads, Ikezios. Nobody knows who or what this is, which is not surprising since the tomb dates back to the Hellenistic period in the 2nd century BC. Some believe that it's attributed to an ancient commander of the same name. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. There are so many things that existed way before our generation was born, things that meant something to the people who lived during that time. That's why there's always a puzzling historical artifact or finding in one place or the other. Scientists and researchers are always searching for answers in order to get a glimpse of the worlds that existed before ours. Now, this drone made a chilling discovery after spotting this on the side of a mountain. It looks like some sort of rock art, a carving of someone or maybe a god. It's probably significant to whoever carved it or the people who reside in the area. We'll find many of those in this video. This particular discovery, we can't really trace to anything. But maybe you can. What do you think this mountain sculpture is? And where do you think it was found? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section and use the hashtag missing topic so we don't miss it. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Barabar -bar Caves the Barabar -bar Caves date back to the Maurya Empire in the 3rd century BC and are considered the oldest surviving rock-cut caves. This cave group lies around 40 kilometers from Bodh Gaya in the state of Bihar in India. Four caves made up what's known as the Barabar -bar Hills. They are Lomas Rishi Caves, Sudama Caves, Vishakarma Caves, and Karan Chapur Caves. The caves were carved out of hard granite rock their surface beautiful and well-polished. Other than that, the caves enhance every sound inside the caves. The Barabar -bar Caves have features such as inclining walls, rounded roofs, and lustrous inner surfaces. All these can characterize as mirror-like in their fantastic effect. So the caves have echo and mirror effects. Did someone say echo and narcissus? It's amazing that this work was done over 2200 years ago because the building technical skills seems like they're from this age. The ancient creators were remarkable artists. Most caves at Barabar -bar consist of two chambers carved entirely out of granite, with perfectly chiseled and polished inner surfaces, also found on sculptures and exciting echo effects. Lastly, the Barabar -bar caves were constructed by Emperor Ashoka for the use of Ajivaka aesthetics. Hence, it's renowned as the place of origin of the Ajivika sect. One of the caves belonged to Buddhists. You can also find Hindu sculptures in the caves. Ancient Tombs in Dalian Kaunas was the son of Miletus and Idothea. He had a twin sister, Byblis, who fell in love with him. When she declared her love to him, he ran far away to another land and named it Kaunas. She searched for him but had no luck finding him. So she wept and wept tears of despair that became the Dalian River. This is one version of the legend. The Lycian ancient tombs in Dalian have become major tourist highlights on the banks of the Dalian River. 
The place is well known for its serene setting because it's remained untouched by the busy urban life. The temple tombs that are there today are the remnants of the Kaunas Cemetery that had once upon a time over 170 rock-cut graves. The tombs are inaccessible now, but their imposing site is worth marveling at. The tombs dated back to mid-4th century BC and were influenced by Greek, Anatolian, and Persian elements. You get the best view of them from across the river or on a boat in the river. The temple tombs are just outside the modern resort town, and the river separates the city from the ancient tombs. Regardless of its nearness to popular and busy destinations like the airport and resort towns, the place is undisturbed and the setting remains natural. The temple tombs make up one of the most interesting sites in Turkey. Secret Room Behind Mount Rushmore Behind the carvings of four American presidents on Mount Rushmore is an 18-foot-tall doorway that resembles the entrance to an ancient tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh. The presidential lineup includes George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. You're probably familiar with this mountain, maybe seen the picture somewhere. The empty room is approximately 75 feet in length with a 35-foot-tall ceiling. Gutzon Borglum, the Danish-American sculptor of the Shrine of Democracy sculpture, probably painted red numbers on the walls which give instructions for the removal of the dynamite rocks jackhammered into holes in the walls. Borgum's plan was for the chamber to be his artist statement, explaining the meaning of his sculpture to future civilizations. He believed that someday, the four faces carved on Mount Rushmore would become unrecognizable and as mysterious as Stonehenge. Imagine it, 2,000 years from now, who's going to recognize Theodore Roosevelt? In Borgum's words, each succeeding civilization forgets its predecessor. The sculptor's initial plan was to have a massive 80 by 120 foot inscription in the shape of the Louisiana Purchase next to Washington's head. The inscription was going to list nine of the most important events in U.S. history between 1776 and 1906. He soon realized that the text wouldn't be legible from far distances, so instead of that, Borglum decided to build a chamber deep within the mountain that would hold some of the country's most valuable documents and artifacts. The Mysterious Gate of the Gods The Gate of the Gods? Where do you think this leads to? Let's see. The Gate of the Gods is also known as the Puerta de Haya Marca, which means Door of Hayu Marca. The story of this gate revolves around spiritual beliefs and Incan mythology. Aramu Muru is a man, a priest, and a legend. Yes, all in one. He served in the Temple of the Seven Rays, and he was able to escape the oncoming destruction of the Peruvians by the Spanish. He fled to the Hayu Marca and the City of the Gods to escape his imminent persecution. With the help of other priests and the use of a golden disc called the Key of the Gods of the Seven Rays, Aramu Muru opened the small door in the face of the rock. The stone door, La Puerta, which is located 35 kilometers from the city of Puno, transformed into a tunnel that was lit with an unearthly blue light. According to legend, Aramu Muru crossed the portal and the door closed after him. It's believed that he is now living in the land of the gods. Today, this door is a sacred place, and no one, not even archaeologists, can pinpoint the period when the first settlers began to worship at the door. When in 1996, a newly hired tour guide, Jose Luis Delgado Mamani, stumbled upon the door, he said it was like a revelation of God. We must all agree that the door is no ordinary door. Cheyenne Mountain Complex At the height of the Cold War in the 1950s, the government decided to build a hardened command and control center as a defense against long-range Soviet bombers. This control center was built inside Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado Springs. It's known as the Cheyenne Mountain Complex. The complex became, over the years, home to elements of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, U.S. Strategic Command, U.S. Air Force Space Command, and U.S. Northern Command. North American Aerospace Defense Command in Colorado Springs has been protecting North America majorly from the facility up in the mountains. Although the complex is quite old, it's still one of the safest places in the world because the base itself is a technological wonder. The station sits behind tons of solid granite, and that's more than enough to withstand any blast. And that's not all. There are 23-ton blast doors that can be closed in 45 seconds to completely seal off the base. In truth, the things that go on inside that mountain are so top secret that it's been a subject of intrigue for years. Rock-hewn churches 
The churches of Lalibela are 11 medieval monolithic churches found in a mountainous region in the heart of Ethiopia, 645 kilometers from Addis Ababa. The churches are carved out of rock and hold religious significance for Ethiopian Orthodox Christians. The monolithic blocks were chiseled out to form windows, doors, roofs, columns, and various floors. The churches are linked by a system of pathways and other structures like storerooms, catacombs, and tombs. Together, the rocks June churches have become a pilgrimage site of spiritual and symbolic value. The Ethiopian tradition ascribes the construction to King Jebra Maskel Lalibela. It's believed that in the 12th century, he set out to construct a new Jerusalem after Christian pilgrims couldn't go to the Holy Land because of Muslim conquests. Every year, the site attracts religious leaders and followers who come for prayers and religious festivals like Timcat and Jenna. The complex consists of two groups of churches. To the north of the river is the House of Mary, House of the Cross, House of the Savior of the World, House of Gogotha Mikhail, and House of Virgins. The churches of the southern group are House of Abbot Libanos, House of St. Mercurios, House of Emmanuel, House of Holy Bread, and House of Gabriel Raphael. The 11th church, House of St. George, stands to the west of the southern group. It's isolated from the other churches, however, it's connected by a system of trenches. House of the Savior of the World has five aisles and is the largest monolithic church in the world. Two others were once used as residences, although they were churches from the beginning. All in all, the churches of Lalibela are nothing like the traditional churches you can find anywhere. Mountain Made of Gold Congo is filled with natural resources like timber, diamonds, oil, tin, and minerals. Some of these resources can be found with so much ease, and although this may look like a blessing, it's also a curse to the government and people as it often leads to pandemonium. Now, let's get to it. Mountain made of what? Gold? How's that possible? Well, once upon a time, in Luhihi, in the South Kivu province of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the people discovered an entire mountain filled with gold. Dozens of villagers, including men, children, and women, struggled to get a piece of the miracle. The videos on social media showed them with their shovels and even their bare hands digging ores on the mountain to extract gold. Because of this gold rush, the authorities announced a ban on mining activities in the area. According to the mines minister of the province, the influx of diggers had put pressure on the small village where the mountain was. As you can see, that's a lot of people. Someone could even get injured. The decree to stop mining activities noted that order must be restored so as to protect lives and ensure the traceability of the gold produced in line with Congolese law. The people of Luhihi must have been very sad after this order. They were literally witnessing something out of an adventure, and it was taking away from them. Not only was it a treasure hunt, it was a jackpot for wealth. Oh well, if a gold mine is discovered down your street, are you going to run down there with your shovel and containers? Temples of Damanhur Some people call the temples of Damanhur the eighth wonder of the world. The community of Damanhur is hidden in the heart of a mountain. 50 kilometers from Turin. The Temples of Humanity is the largest underground construction in the world. The community was officially recognized as a work of art by the Superintendents of Fine Arts. In 1978, 28-year-old Oberto Iraudi, alongside a group of volunteers, began a 16-year project of building their city, working in four-hour shifts, slowly digging the earth and rock by hand. Today, it's a tourist attraction site and thousands of onlookers and tourists visit the temples every year. According to the man who began building the massive underground temple, the complex is only 10% complete. 10%? The temple spreads over 8,500 cubic meters on five different levels. The sculpture has ceilings 25 feet high. The walls and hallways are completely covered in murals and sculptures done by followers. This place also has its own currency, administrative jobs, educational and economic system, and exclusive job positions. It's basically a mini underground country. They call themselves an eco-society and believe that man is the bearer of a divine spark. They really are a happy group of about 600 people who meditate and value spirituality. They believe that the earth is a living being and man is connected to it as much as he's connected to other living beings. They're really cool over there, but some people believe the Temple of Humanity to be a cult 
filled with zombie-like people who go around with vacant stares. Oh. Maijishan Grottoes, the Dunhang Mogao Grottoes, Maijishan Grottoes, Datong Yungang Grottoes, and Luyang Longmen Grottoes are collectively known as the four great grottoes in China. Just in case you're wondering, a grotto is a small picturesque cave, and we'll be focusing on the Maijishan Caves. Maijishan Grottoes are also called Maiji Mountain Grottoes or Maijishan Caves and is located in the Maiji District, Tianchu City, Gansu Province, Northwest China. Maijishan is a large sculpture museum. The caves were first built in 384 to 417 AD and later expanded. Now there are 221 caves, 10,632 clay sculptures, and over 1,300 square meters of murals. It's praised as the Oriental Sculpture Art Exhibition Hall. The Maiji Mountain is 490 feet tall, named after its shape like that of a pile of wheat. Maiji in Chinese means piled sheaves of wheat. The stone and clay carvings in Maiji Shan have been well preserved since ancient times, just like the Parthenon Temple in ancient Greece. Maiji Shan Grottoes is not as famous as the other three great grottoes but it is the best preserved. The caves are chiseled on the cliff of the mountain, and because of this, they're not easily accessible. However, what you'll see up there is totally worth the climb. Prajama Castle Prajama Castle is the kind of place that features in legends. It's riddled with secret passageways and narrow shafts and is located in South Slovenia. It's a Renaissance castle constructed in the Gothic style in the 13th century. Prajama Castle is considered one of the architectural masterpieces of all time. The castle has changed ownership several times throughout its history. The most famous inhabitant and owner were Erizam Luger, a knight who said to have locked himself inside the fortress for a year and a day, fleeing from the Holy Roman Empire. Some legends say he was a handsome and noble knight, while others say he was rebellious. He got into trouble when he killed the commander of the imperial army at the Vienna court for offending the honor of his deceased friend. So he ended up on the most wanted list. He was probably number one on that list. He fled for his dear life to the castle in the village of Prajama. Day and night, the emperor's soldiers surrounded the castle, waiting for him to come out. They thought he'd starve, but to their surprise, the headstrong knight had an unlimited supply of food in the castle. They didn't know of the secret tunnel leading to the nearby village. He was able to collect food and supplies, but in the end, after 366 days, one of his men betrayed him and he was assassinated. Petra the Lost City The city of Petra dates back to the 4th century BC. It's located about 150 miles south of Amman, the capital of Jordan and Jerusalem. It's also midway between Damascus, Syria, and the Red Sea and this makes it suitable for commerce. If you've ever come across the Bible, these places would sound familiar to you. Yeah, they're Bible places, but we sometimes forget that they're real places too. Real cities, real rivers, and real seas. Petra is referred to as the Rose City because of the color of the stones used in its buildings. In 1985, the Petra Archaeological Park was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site but that was a small feat compared to its naming as one of the new seven wonders of the world in 2007. The site is honored by historians and archaeologists because of its beautiful rock-cut architecture. Another notable thing about Petra is it's surrounded by desert and mountainous terrain. However, it has an advanced water management system which makes the region inhabitable, and that's another reason archaeologists are awed by it. It's filled with dozens of tombs and carved structures and sites but the truth is archaeologists have uncovered only a small percentage, let's say 15 of the city. The vast majority, about 85%, is still lost somewhere underground. The city was once a bubbling center of commerce, but it slowly crumbled due to earthquakes and the rise in importance of sea trade routes. By the end of 700 AD, the city had reached its lowest point. Today, visitors can see the evidence of the many cultures and tribes that ever lived here. There's even a spot where some believe Moses from the Bible struck a rock with a staff and water burst out. The Apennine Colossus Colosso del Apennino is a mountain god that stands 35 feet tall over the ground of Villa di Pratolino in Tuscany. 
He's half man, half mountain, and was created by renowned Italian sculptor Giambologna in the late 1500s as a representation of Italy's rugged Apennine Mountains. The epic colossus is indeed marvelous, but there's a but. That's not all there is to the gigantic statue. Even more intriguing is the fact that there are several rooms hidden in this interior with different functions that bring Apennino to life. The statue guards the pond in his front as well as the caves in his belly. The Colossus Slash building has different chambers in the body, including a fireplace in his head that, when lit, would release smoke out of his nose. Cool, right? There's also a room that holds a small orchestra to play music for people visiting the big old Colosso del Apennino. The giant may seem lonely now, but once upon a time he had neighboring bronze statues, but they're gone now. They were either lost or stolen. The 35-foot stone and brick structure hasn't moved an inch since it was erected. It's withstood rain and sun. It's been weathered and worn, but still, it's remained magnificent. If you find yourself in Florence, you should go say hi to this gentle giant. Passage to another world. Goshute Cave is a popular underground network of caves worn down into natural limestone on the eastern flanks of the Cherry Creek Range in the Goshute Canyon Wilderness Area in the Eli District, BLM, Nevada. The cave contains a variety of formations, like stalactites, stalagmites, and shields. It's also a tiny cave. The passages are low, tight, and dark, as you can see now. So if you want to tour the Goshute Cave, especially if you want to see more than a room or two, expect to get very dusty and out of breath. Pack up a helmet, flashlight, mask, gloves, and of course, water. The story, or maybe the legend of the cave, is not a popular one. The cave was the home of a race of people who would take and capture anyone who entered it. There's a story of two maidens that entered the cave and went missing for years until they finally re-emerged and shared the story of how they lived in Goshoot. They described the place as having lush fields, abundant food, and beautiful plants and animals. Till today, many natives who live around the cave are weary of it and won't even enter it. We can't say we blame them either. Table Mountain Secret Tunnels One of South Africa's oldest catchment systems is hidden beneath the streets of Cape Town. The underground tunnels began as canals that transported millions of liters of fresh spring water from Table Mountain into the sea. The entrance to the tunnel is pretty small and is hidden from sight. The tunnels go about 100 meters into the mountain and 30 meters down. Cape Town is known as Kamisa by the indigenous Koei people. The name means the place of sweet waters. There were only four rivers and 36 springs coming from the mountain and running through the city. These water bodies supplied the entire population with clean water. Dutch colonizers in 1652 built canals to channel a large amount of water straight into the ocean. For many years, the canals were an essential network for transporting fresh water. Today, most of these canals lie unused underneath the city. Cape Town now relies majorly on rainwater and distant dams to meet the city's water needs. Locals and tourists derive pleasure from exploring the once efficient water system hidden beneath the city. The place has a faint, damp smell, and you may run into a family of cockroaches huddled in a corner. But the tunnels are actually well ventilated and clean. One thing you're sure to enjoy is the sound of cars and motorcycles above, echoing through the tunnels. Waitomo Glowworm Caves Waitomo Glowworm Caves are known specifically for one thing, glowworms. Glowworms are worms that glow. Pretty simple. They glow because they're bioluminescent, meaning that the chemicals they secrete react with the oxygen in the air to create light. The glowworms in the Waitomo Caves are the larvae of a species of gnat, which is unique to New Zealand. Located on the north island of the country, the Waitomo Glowworm Caves have been a location for tourists from all over the world to explore and learn about its history since about 1890. In addition to the glowworms, it's also intricately dispersed with limestone formations. Its name, Waitomo, originates from the Maori word Wai, water, and Tomo, hole or shaft. It was discovered by a local and some surveyors from England. Apparently, the local people had known about the caves for about a century before the Englanders were shown the way in. They went on to do extensive explorations in 1887 and 1888 and were surprised by the limestone depositions 
as they went further into the catacombs. In 1890, the word was spread about the strange caves and about 500 tourists had already made their way there to see them. Presently, the glowworm caves of Waitomo is guarded by a scientific advisory group and there are guided tours through the three different levels of the caves. Davilus Cave Davilus Cave is one of the most mysterious yet rarely ever visited places in Athens. As far back as the 5th century, the cave was used as a shrine to worship Pan, the goat-footed god of shepherds. During this time, the place was called the Cave of the Immaculate. The name which we know the cave today was given after the 19th century bandit Davilus, who with his band used the cave as a hideout. Legend says that there was a maze of tunnels which could take him all the way to his lover's mansion. At the cave's entrance are two adjacent Byzantine chapels. This is a testimony that during the Middle Ages, hermits and monks flocked to the area for religious ceremonies. One of the churches is dedicated to St. Spiridon and the other to St. Nicholas. One very rare thing that was found in the cave was a naturally mummified body of a woman. It's now kept at the Museum of Criminology in Athens. There's been rumors about strange happenings in the cave, some of which are water rolling up instead of down, sightings of cat-like creatures walking on two legs and electronics going out of control. Probably the lights go on and off and off and on once in a while. If you want to see these happen live, it may be difficult for you to get there because of transportation issues. Besides that, the locals aren't very enthusiastic about having visitors around. Culver Hole Culver Hole in Port Ainen is one of the many caves of the Gower Peninsula. Only adventurous and brave explorers dare venture into the most treacherous of Gower's caves because they're known to be used for illegal and illicit purposes by pirates and smugglers. Legend has it that in the 18th century, John Lucas, the most infamous Gower pirate and smuggler who was exceptionally good-looking as much as he was exceptionally violent, used Culver Hole as a base for his illegal operations. If the legend is true, it means there was once a network of tunnels stretching away from the salt house, where John Lucas and his crew operated for stolen goods to be transported away from prying eyes. In the words of historian and expert on Gower folklore, Helen Nicholas, Gower's coves were the perfect place to deposit your contraband on the way to a nearby port in the city. It was the hiding spot of criminals, a store for their stolen goods. The weird part of this is that the local community was in on the action. Even the vicar was. There are tales of hiding contraband in the church. There's another version of the legend that says that Culver Hole was part of a fortress that stood on the cliff top above because of its castle-like appearance. Some researchers are still very interested in Culver Hole, hoping to find remains of prehistoric animals and proof that humans once inhabited the cave. So good luck to them. George's Kachki Pillar when you drive through the windy country lanes of Georgia's remote, western Emredi region, you could easily miss the beautiful sight of the Kachki Pillar. To find it, you have to pass a hidden lane, signposted with the picture of a church. There you'll find one of the highest and perhaps the most isolated church and monastery in the world. The Kachki Pillar is a natural limestone monolith towering more than 130 feet, and atop it is a church. The church at the top was built in the 6th to 8th centuries and is dedicated to Maximus the Confessor, a 7th century monk. At the base of the pillar is a monastery and a small chapel at the right. There's also a wine cellar, burial chamber, and three hermit cells. One of the monks who reside in the rock is Maxime Kavtaradze. In 1993, he abandoned everything to make this place his home, and in an interview in 2013, he revealed why. After he was released from jail for drug-relating offenses, he realized that the best way to repent and get closer to God was through meditation in a solitary cell. So he didn't see it as going from one prison to another, in case you're thinking about that. Maxime climbed the 131-foot ladder to an isolated cell atop the Kachki pillar. This was where he felt a connection with God. He would occasionally come down to pray with other men at the bottom of the pillar or to be of help to those who needed him. The monastery is not a tourist site. Only monks are allowed to enter. Women can't even get close. Climbing to the top of the pillar is also forbidden, but there's a lot more to see in the Kachki complex. M Cave of Kenny Veach. We're down to number one, and trust us, you're about to hear one mysterious story. 
Las Vegas resident and avid hiker Kenny Veach commented on a YouTube video claiming to have found a cave shaped like a perfect capital M. He gave a description of what happened to him when he began to enter the cave. My whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the cave entrance, the worse the vibrating became. He got scared like any average human would and got himself out of there. He said it was one of the strangest things that ever happened to him. But with the egging of fellow commenters, Veach decided to pay the M-Cave another visit, and this time with a camera. What the 47-year-old didn't know was that the decision would lead to one of Nevada's most puzzling urban legends. He set out to find the cave armed with a 9mm handgun and a video camera. To his dismay and that of his viewers on YouTube, he was unable to locate the cave. But they said, try a third time, Kenny. And so on November 10th, 2014, he left home for an overnight hike and that was the last time anyone ever heard or saw Kenny Veach. A search party was formed and his story headlined the news. A week later, they found his cell phone near an abandoned mine shaft, but there was no sign of Veach or the cave he so desperately wanted the world to see. Not everyone would have the opportunity to tour all of these caves. There are even some you can't explore and some unidentified, like the M Cave. That's why we've brought them to you today. We hope you enjoyed today's video and that it wasn't too dusty for you. See you next time.